In this video, we're going to be looking at areas under curves and below the x-axis. We haven't yet looked at areas below the x-axis in this series, but we have touched on areas under curves. So in this video, we're looking to solidify what we've covered so far and extend that as well. The first example says find the area between the curve f of x, the x-axis and the lines x equals 1 and x equals 3, where f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 17x take 10. The first thing we want is a sketch of the curve to understand if the area is above or below the x-axis. I can already see because this is a negative quadratic it will be above the x-axis but it's still good practice to sketch the curve each time and to get that practice in as well. So to sketch this curve we want the roots, to get the roots we want to factorise. I might factorise a negative 1 out first just to make it a bit easier. So this becomes uh, the following, plus 10 on the end, and then I'm looking for factors of 10 and 3 that make 17. Um, so these are 3, well the only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. So if it factorises they must be two of the factors we choose, and then if we pick 5 and 2, and if they're both negatives, we get negative 17. Okay, then we can sketch the curve. Well, let's write down our roots. So our roots are going to be 2 on 3 and 5. Okay, so they're both positive. So let's draw our, our, our curve like this. And then we can draw a rough sketch. It just needs to be rough just to understand where that area is. Of course, this gets a bit harder when you're doing cubics and quartics and things, which we'll do in a moment after this example. Um, and then we're looking for the area between 1 and 3, so it'll look something like this, just roughly. Okay, to find the area, we find the definite integral from 1 to 3 of this function. And we can apply the power rule to each term. Remember that's adding 1 to the power and dividing so 2 plus 1 is 3, and we divide by 3, so that's going to give us negative x cubed. Um, and we put the square brackets, remember, what? go back to that video on definite integrals to remember this process. And then applying the power rule to each term, we would get the following. Okay, and that's from 1 to 3, and those bounds go on the, uh, the right-hand side now. Okay, then we plug in 3, and we subtract when we plug in 1. So 3 cubed, that's negative 27, plus, I'll just write this as 17 on 2 multiplied by 9, and then take 30. Okay, you get quite good with fractions after working with integrals for a while. Okay, then plugging in 1, we get negative 1 plus 17 on 2, take uh, uh, no, not plus, take 10. I was thinking it was a negative one for a moment. If you're brave, you can try to do work this out by hand. You can also plug it straight into a calculator. Of course, in A-levels, you're always going to have a calculator in your exam, so there's no harm in doing it that way. Uh, but this actually simplifies fairly nicely uh, because what we get here is nine lots of 17 on two. And over here, we're going to get plus one take one lot of 17 on 2, and that becomes a plus 10, remember to distribute that negative to all of the terms, and then if you subtract one, uh, 17 on 2 from 9 lots of 17 on 2, you get 8 lots of 17 on 2, and you add the constants, you get uh, negative 46 plus 8 lots of 17 on 2, then the 8 cancels with the 2, and you get uh, just a, a simple multiplication, well not simple, but you know, you don't, you get rid of the fractions is I guess what I was trying to say. Um, then you work that out and you get 22. Um, so I went through that, those calculations fairly quickly again because you can just put it into a calculator. That's probably the most uh, practical uh, way to do it. So that's your final answer there for that area between 1 and 3 underneath that function. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the process you find the roots, sketch the curve, and then uh, then find the definite integral. Okay, let's have a look at an example with a uh, quartic. So this says find the area, uh, same as the last question, the bounds are now zero to four, and we have this function here, negative x, x take one squared, multiplied by x take five. So it's already factorized for us, so we can, um, we just need to understand how to sketch a quartic, which you cover earlier on, 
in the course. The first thing to note is this uh, leading coefficient is negative, so that it will be a negative quartic which, which has this shape. It's like uh, upside down kind of thing. A positive quartic goes this way like a W. Um, and then we can interpret the roots. There's one at zero because when x equals zero, f of x is zero. So it is going to go through zero. There's a double root at positive one. So let's say about there. And then there's a root at positive five. Okay, so we know the, the graph must come up like this and go through zero, zero. Then because there's a double root at positive one, it must touch the, the x-axis there. So I should label my axes. Touches the x-axis there, and then it must go up and through the x-axis, such as this. Okay, so that's all we really need just to understand if the area is above or below the x-axis. And we're looking for the area from zero to four, so it would be something like there. So we're looking for that total area. Okay, so to find the definite integral, first we want to expand this out. Uh, if you <laughs> do that, I'm not going to go through all the steps because it's quite lengthy, uh, but you can have fun with that and you can check that your answer is the same and it should look like this. Okay, and now we find the definite integral from zero to four. And again, we are going to be able to apply that power rule to each term. So you might be wondering, is that all we need, the power rule? Of course not. There's always gonna be more complicated functions which you learn about later on. For now, we're just kind of trying to understand the fundamentals. Uh, but as we go on, we look at more complicated functions and, you know, different rules that you can use to, f to integrate those. Uh, but again, applying the power rule, plus one to the exponent, divide, that's going to be x to the power five on five, uh, plus seven on four, x to the four, uh, take 11 on three, x cubed, plus five on two, Oh, that is not a two, don't know what that was. And then our bounds go on the right hand side. You can get a little bit fancy here and factorize an x squared, which is what I'm going to do. You don't have to do this, but uh, I feel like it makes plugging in the four a bit easier if this is just x cubed here and not x to the power five. So if we factorize that x squared, I meant to write there, then it should make the calculations just a little bit simpler. And there we go. Okay, so plugging in the four first, we're going to get 16 multiplied by all of this. Um, and well, that 16 will cancel with that four, so that's just going to be seven multiplied by four, which is 28. Um, that's not going to simplify. 44 on three, and that's just a constant. Okay, and then we need to subtract zero. Uh, that's easy actually, because when we plug in zero, that's just going to be zero. Okay, again, this is the case where you can have fun trying to um, work this out by hand, if you like. Uh, again, the more practical way is to uh, plug it into a calculator. I think it's good practice sometimes, occasionally, to make sure you can do these calculations by hand. And it's good revision for, you know, just making sure your, your fundamentals of working with numbers are up to scratch as well. Uh, but if you do either work that out or with a calculator, you should get 48 and 8 fifteenths for that area between 0 and 4. Okay, let's have a look at some examples where the, some of the area is below the x-axis or all of the area. Okay, this question says, find the total area of the finite region bounded by the curve and the x-axis when y equals x times x plus two. Just a quick note on the wording used. Uh, so when it says total area of the finite region, that means any area bounded by the curve. So let's sketch this quickly. We know that it's a positive quadratic and it has a root at uh, negative one, at uh, negative two, sorry, and zero. So it'll look something like, something like this. 
gosh, that's not good. Let me go through zero. Okay, that's good enough. So let's say that's negative two and that's zero. So this area is what we call uh, a finite region. You could say this area is also underneath the curve, uh, but it's not a bounded finite region. Okay, so when it's so just a, a note on that wording there, just to make sure you're understanding what the question is asking. Um, so let's expand these brackets, and then let's find this integral from uh, negative two to zero. Now the point you need to understand about areas underneath the x-axis are uh, that when you find this integral, it will give you a negative error if you just do the same process as we've been doing so far. Uh, you might wonder why it gives a negative area. That doesn't really make sense, right? It looks like a, a, it should be positive. Um, it's not a big deal really, but as long as you understand integration from first principles, you understand why it's negative. Remember when we were finding areas using rectangles, if you found the heights of these rectangles, right, uh, that, that height is just a negative, gives you a negative value of y, okay? So because you're treating the height as a negative, because it's underneath the curve, that's why it's giving you a negative area. Uh, so it's not that big of a deal, don't get too caught up on it, um, but we do have to do something slightly different here. Uh, so let's firstly work through this as we've been doing. So applying the power rule, that's going to be x cubed on 3 plus x squared from negative 2 to 0. And plugging in 0, that would just be 0, and then we take away plugging in negative 2, that would be negative 8 on 3 plus 4. Um, and then this gives you, if you add, uh, that would be positive 8 on 3, take 4, that gives you negative a third, uh, sorry, negative 1 and a third. So notice how it's giving us a negative area. All we need to do to counteract this is introduce a negative in this step, okay? So we multiply the whole thing by negative 1, and this becomes a positive area, okay? So all this is to me is just a slightly strange effect of asking for an area underneath the curve, which is kind of a strange question to ask, which means you get these negative areas. And because we recognize they will be negative, we just introduce a negative one uh, to counteract that. So you're finding an actual positive area. And again, if you understand integration from first principles, I think it's not such a big deal. Okay, let's have a look at an example with a cubic. So this says find the total area of the finite region bounded by the curve, and the curve is y equals x times x take 2 times x take 5. It's factorized already for us, so it uh, shouldn't be too hard sketching this curve. It's a positive cubic, which uh, it also has two positive roots, so let's draw it like this, and it goes through 0. Remember, a positive cubic looks like this, a negative cubic has that shape. So we know we're going to come up from below the x-axis and go through 0, 0, which would be this root. Then the next root is positive 2, and the last one is positive 5. So it might look something like this. Okay. And here we have an area above the x-axis and below the x-axis. Okay, so let's have a look at what we do there. Let's firstly expand this out. So this is going to be x squared take 7x uh, plus 10. Then we multiply all of that by x. Then we can find the definite integral. Now when you have an area above the x-axis and below the x-axis, you split it up. So you find the integral, the definite integral from 0 to 2. And then you do the integral from 2 to 5. Okay, so it looks like this, and you subtract them. Again, that's where you introduce that negative to counteract the fact that this integral gives you a negative area. So you subtract the area underneath the x-axis. Okay, so next we can apply uh, the rules of integration to each function. 
Um, so this is going to be x to the 4 on 4. And hopefully you're pretty confident with this. That will be 5x squared. And subtract, we already did it. So we just write out the same thing again. And this is from 2 to 5. Okay, plugging in 2. We're going to get uh, 16 on 4, which is uh, 4. This one uh, would be 56 on 3, plus 20. Um, and then we subtract 0. And then we subtract all of this. So plugging in 5, 5 to the 4 is 625 on 4, uh, 5 cubed. That's 125, I might just write it like that. And then 5 squared is 25 times 5, same as 5 cubed. So then we plug in 2. We still subtract that, that nothing changes there. The only thing that changes is when you're adding areas above the x-axis and below the x-axis, you just add that subtraction in instead of, like for example, if you had a curve like we did before with that quartic, um, we would just add those two areas, um, but yeah, again, we just subtract it. That's all that's different. Okay, so plugging in 2, we're going to get, oh, we've already done that, haven't we? So just as we did in the first part there. Okay, again, you can have a lot of fun trying to simplify this and working through all of the messy uh, arithmetic or you can just plug this monster into a calculator. Maybe you could do a little bit of simplifying before you put it into a calculator. Uh, it's, I guess it's kind of up to you, whatever you find works best, but you should end up with a final answer of 21 and a half. It's the editor here. Uh, that should be 21 and 1 12th. I apologize. Uh, sometimes these errors happen and it's, easier just to correct it in the edit rather than uh, recording the whole thing again. So, yeah, 21 and a 12, not 21 and a half. Thanks. Okay. So, there you go. That is looking at areas underneath curves and underneath the x-axis. Let me know if there's anything uh, that uh, didn't make sense there or anything you want in more detail. Please leave a like if you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.